Hi, my name's Aaron. You're on the Knox YouTube channel, and this is our review of the all new Husqvarna Norden 901. So it goes without saying that this is one of the most hotly anticipated motorcycles over the last couple of years. I mean, I was there 2019 at the Eichma show when the well, this bike was revealed basically on the Husqvarna stand and I was exhibiting there and that week was just packed full of people you know, talking about this bike and the possibilities, the styling of it, what it represented. And it's just amazing to see that concept that was so hotly anticipated actually come into the flesh and actually looking so similar to the concept. I can't believe how close they've made it and I can confirm in the flesh it just looks absolutely fantastic. Yes, there's a couple of bits changed. We haven't got the, uh, the big engine bars. Um, there's a couple of small changes, but it's incredibly close to the concept model that I saw in the flesh at Eichma that people went absolutely mad for. So I think anyone who's sort of interested in it from you know, its launch there and its reveal there is going to be more than happy with how it looks in the flesh. And that in mind, you also get very much the impression from being out here that this is a really important motorcycle for Husqvarna um, as a brand. This bike, in terms of what it represents, it's an adventure bike, it's slapped bang right in the middle of that adventure market segment that is so, so popular and you can tell that they've pulled out all of the stops to make it as good as it possibly can be, to give it the best launch that it possibly can be from the development of the bike and, and how it performs. We're going to talk about that, um, but also how they've launched it here in the beautiful uh, Azores. Now, the Azores, wow, what a country, what a place to launch this motorcycle. I mean, this little island in the middle of of the Atlantic Ocean has just got um, incredible scenery. It's almost like three or four countries mixed up all in one. You know, you've got parts of the, the, the island that look like South America. You've got parts of the island that look like the Mediterranean, like this on the front. And then also parts that look like my home in uh, the Lake District in Cumbria. And, and then you can turn around a corner and of course you've got English cows um, around every corner. They do a lot of dairy production here. What that has given us um, is a very good place to benchmark this bike. We've had a huge amount of different terrain from good tarmac roads to poor quality tarmac roads to broken up uh, asphalt. We've had some dirt roads. We've had some rougher sections as well. We've had sand and mixing into that as well. We've also had a fair share of different weather from, you know, a nice sunny afternoon like we've got right now through to you know really heavy and and thick rain you know we've seen it all and it's given us a fantastic opportunity to get to grips with what the Norden 901 is like in just a short uh, few days. So the Azores are a really inspiring place to ride a motorcycle and I have to say having two days of uh, riding the Norden 901 it's a really inspiring motorcycle to ride that makes you want to do travel makes you want to go further go and see places um, it's a very very uh, inspiring bike to ride and it sounds like I've been drinking the kool-aid of the marketing uh, material but it really is and, and I've thoroughly enjoyed riding it so first impressions of the bike you know you walk up to it and you sit on it it's very comfortable it's got nice wide uh, high bars it's got what feels like to me um, a fairly low seat, a very manageable uh, riding position, incredibly comfortable seats as well I should say. Um, the bars have got a huge turning circle um, and uh, basically you never run out of turning circle. That's one of the confidence inspiring things about this bike. Um, we will find out that this bike has uh, inherited some of the 
KTM capabilities, I should say. And one of the big features is the, the fact that the fuel tanks is um, put uh, in a low centre of gravity on the motorcycle. That means that whatever weight is there it is quite low and it makes the bike feel quite light, quite nimble, very easy to manage and, and manoeuvre around. It's also an incredibly uh, confidence-inspiring motor to, to use. It's not intimidating, it's not going to rip your arms off and it's a very predictable and easy to ride motorcycle. I can see a lot of people really enjoying riding this. So I suppose we better kick off with the engine. Now this is clearly, this is the, the KTM 890 parallel twin. This one is kicking out 105 horsepower. You guys who watch the Knox channel will know I'm a massive fan of the KTM 890 Duke R. This engine obviously is sort of lifted from that, but it's detuned. Oh, it's, it's, it's mapped in quite a different way. It's a lot softer, it's a lot friendlier. Um, but it's also very playful as well. It loves a good wheelie and that is a really uh, cool thing about this bike and I think sometimes when people are considering buying an adve adventure bike they almost can feel like they're giving up a little bit. Well not so with this bike, it's a, it's a very entertaining motor to use. So how's it to ride on the road? Well, it's very capable and that's very much the impression that you get. As I say, it's incredibly comfortable, it's got a fantastic motor, it handles really well, but more than that, you very much get the sense that you could put a lot of mileage on this motorcycle, and that's sort of in line with what it's designed for as a long distance adventure bike. The fuel tank is incredible. I mean, we rode literally all day yesterday. I think we did 270 odd kilometers. We still had like a third of a tank of fuel left which is for me at least is incredibly impressive um, it's got a cruise control which is very very easy to use it feels very refined like you could sit on a motorway for hours and hours and hours and be very comfortable it's uh, it's, it's a very nice uh, motorcycle to ride over a long distance. It also handles really well as well. It's predictable, it's light, even though it's got a 21 inch front wheel, which sometimes can feel a little bit cumbersome to uh, chuck around corner to corner. It's great, you know, very predictable, turns well. The tire choice is actually very well suited to long distance travel as well. Uh, it's a big thumbs up from me on, on the on-road performance of the bike. onto the off-road capability of this bike. Now, normally I'm a little bit tentative when it comes to mid-sized or bigger adventure bikes when it comes to off-road terrain. I've got a 701 Enduro, and for me, that's about the perfect sort of weight, uh, you know, to be chucking around off-road. But I have to say, I've been absolutely blown away um, with how capable this bike is uh, in an off-road setting. I mean, it's probably not gonna look it on GoPro, but actually, um, some of the dirt roads that we've been doing have actually been a little bit challenging and um, I've just been amazed about how well the bike performs. You know, it just rolls over the, the, the bumps, it's got really a good long travel suspension. Um, the motor is very tractable. Now, the benchmark for me in terms of this middleweight uh, adventure bike for off-road was the 790 Adventure R. But the weak side for me that that bike had was its tendency to stall when the speeds got a little bit lower. Well, on purpose today, I ran this in second gear at really low speeds going up a hill. And normally when the 790 Adventure R would have uh, stalled in that circumstance, and that's when you get into trouble actually. This one, you know, you just feather the, the, the clutch and you find traction and just carry on uh, up the hill. It's very, very impressive. The other thing, because the motor is the way it is and you haven't got a huge amount of uh, traction on the rear wheel and of course you've got the off-road settings that we're going to come up to in the electronics, it's really easy to get a nice power slide on. So if you are liking to sort of show off in front of your mates and do a nice power slide, it's dead easy to do and look really, really cool. It's also got a very impressive uh, off-road ABS setting as well, which enables you to uh, lock up the rear, skid the rear, and also the, the ABS on the off-road uh, mode 
is not very intrusive at all. You can actually find that you can apply quite a lot of hard brakes off-road and not have the ABS interfering, which ultimately just uh, saps your confidence. The Norden 901 is absolutely loaded to the teeth with the absolute latest electronics that you could expect to find on a modern uh, middleweight adventure bike from the cruise control that is fitted as standard by the way. The, the up and down quick shifter which is a real joy to use actually and it's got that similar um, characteristic to the 890 Duke car when you bang it up the quick shifter it pops and it's just a very nice thing to use. We've got uh, various rider modes from street to off-road and also the, off, uh, the, the optional explorer mode which allows you, uh, enables you to modulate how much traction control you've got. It's a very very comprehensive electronic suite and very impressive. They've also redesigned the dash and that now is fitting into the Husqvarna sort of design language that they've got going on with the whole bike. It's a really refined electronics package and very, very impressive. Now we're going to quickly talk about the brakes. They're fantastic and I think that, you know, brakes on an adventure bike are probably a little bit of a compromise because in some ways, in terms of the on-road ability, perhaps you'd want a touch more bite, a touch more power. There is power there but perhaps you'd want to touch more, but then when you go in an off-road setting, actually it pays dividends to have a little bit of a softer application of brakes. So this one I think is, is pretty much in the middle and um, they do a good job basically. So the suspension on the Norden 901 is fantastic. Obviously it's Husqvarna, so it's gonna be WP product. It's very, very plush. Uh, we've got 220 mil up the front. I think we've got 215 mil travel on the rear and it's been fantastic in every setting that we've, that we've put it in. Uh, really plush and refined on the road, coping with all the lumps and bumps that we have that we found on the terrain that we've had. Um, yeah, you get a little bit of weight transfer and if you're really pushing it mid-corner it, uh, and you get bumps in the middle of the corner, it can become a little bit unsettled. But again, you know, it's a, it's a compromise, but it's a very, very good setup. Um, in terms of off-road, really good as well. The technical team are also advising that the suspension, you can change the springs as well. So if you're uh, particularly heavy or you're carrying a lot of luggage, you can go to your local Husqvarna dealer and get springs to fit your weight, basically. Um, there is also going to be a little bit further down the line the possibility to put like a pro parts uh, WP kit in it as well. So if you really want to go like whole hog with your Norden 901 and have it a little bit more like the concept bike that was shown at Eichmer, you will be able to buy a, a new front fork kit and a new shock as well. So who's it for? Well this is a tough one I think because it, the appeal could be so wide from people who just like the look of it and are inspired by the look of it and figure out that actually it's a really good bike and therefore they just they just want to buy it through to people that you know want to do the genuine thing and actually ride around the world and want to do long distance travel adventure I can see these being used in the cities I can see them being used as a commuter bike or just people that just want a really good motorcycle that you can do pretty much everything on a bit of trail riding a lot of road work and just have something that's really good to look at. So it wouldn't be a Knox review if there wasn't some downsides that we could pick out, um, you know, because it, it's not balanced therefore. But at the same time, it's an incredibly difficult bike to knock and I'm not gonna stand here and knock anything about it because I don't, I don't think I genuinely can. Uh, I think if it was my own bike and I was gonna be doing some of the off-roading that we'd be doing, I would probably put a little bit more of an aggressive tyre on. Uh, I just wanted a little bit more grip from the front end, but then that's a really personal issue. Um, I think the only other thing that you could potentially knock is that spec sheet wise, the bike is a little bit heavier than perhaps what people would have expected. It's a little bit heavier than an 890 Adventure from KTM, for example. But I have to say in practice, that's masked incredibly well and not once have I thought oh god this is a this is a heavy bike or I'm struggling because of the weight of it it handles its weight incredibly well um, so it's 
you know, it's just a spec sheet thing, but you have to actually ride one to experience that and really work out what's going on with it. But from my point of view, and being a guy who's normally tentative about weight and off-roading and stuff like that, it's, it's a thumbs up from me. So to summarise the Northern 901, I think it's absolutely amazing. I think Husqvarna have done an incredible job with it. And I can very much think that they're going to be incredibly successful with this motorcycle. I think we're going to see a lot of them on our roads. You know, at the end of the day, would I personally buy one? Yes, I definitely would. I think this is a knockout the park motorcycle. Really, really impressed. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like, let us know what you think in the comment section, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.